Hey everybody, how you feeling today? Me? <clears throat> kind of pooped at the moment. Been a long and hectic day, so I apologize in advance if I'm not my usual, energetic, charismatic, always in your face 100% neo. You know, by me saying that right now and doing all those actions, I kind of retconned what I... Re <laughs> it's beyond the point. Moving right along, what are we going to talk about today? We are going to be talking about some superhero-related information, because really, what else is there to talk about this week? Well, Nickelodeon did just greenlit spinoffs to iCarly and Victorious. So, um, yeah, a moment of silence for TV. Fuck that, M.O.S. It's not like TV was any less dead. Anyway, getting on to the information. Two big pieces to share with you guys and discuss and give my point of view on them. So for those who have been unaware, or those who don't care, but are just watching this video, for the past, I'd say, four to five years, Marvel has been hard at work at building up their live-action film portfolio. We've seen solo movies from Captain America, Thor, The Incredible Hulk, and yes, of course, Iron Man. Sequels to all of those films, for the most part, have been confirmed, with the exception of The Incredible Hulk. It's kind of up in the air what Marvel is going to do with that series. They're kind of playing their cards safe with it, considering the box office return of The Incredible Hulk. But to be honest, the way I see it, I'm kind of glad they aren't doing them because, well, you guys know I'm not too particularly fond of Mark Ruffalo. <laughs> yeah. Anyway... So one of the biggest problems that has been facing Marvel as of late, ever since they've become an independent film, film company, would be rights, licenses, and acquiring them from competitors. Because as you know, before Marvel really started up this whole MCU, Marvel Cinematic Universe deal, uh, they licensed out their characters to various film studios. From Columbia Pictures to, of course, the one I'm talking about today, 20th Century Fox. As you guys have known, Fox has made films based off the X-Men film franchise, uh, Daredevil, and that film series that I keep trying to forget, but somebody keeps bringing it up. Oh yeah, that's right, the Fantastic Four. Because who wants to remember those movies? Cloud. That's, that's all I have to say. A giant fucking Galactus Cloud! Yeah! But... 20th Century Fox hasn't been doing too good as of late in the superhero film department. They haven't been seeing much box office return for films like X-Men, X-Men Origins Wolverine, and X-Men First Class. While First Class was a good movie in its own rights, the box office performance compared to other films really wasn't, you know, too great. And time was dwindling on the rights for Fantastic Four and Daredevil because, as you know, once the film rights expire, they revert back to Marvel and Marvel would be able to do whatever the heck they wanted to do with those characters, be it put them in the MCU or just, well, throw them on the back burner. But 20th Century Fox doesn't want to let that happen because why would they lose this license, this popular franchise, essentially a chance for them to make even more moolah without even having to do anything? So they've been working on a Fantastic Four reboot as well as a Daredevil reboot, and it really hasn't been going anywhere. So this year in particular is the year where the rights for Daredevil would expire. So if 20th Century Fox didn't have a proof of concept or show that they've been working, even trying to do something for Daredevil, they would go back to Marvel. But a deal was struck earlier this week where Marvel would give 20th Century Fox more time to work on their Daredevil film, I believe they just announced a director, Joe Carnahan. He directed The A-Team, 2010 A-Team, as well as The Grey with Liam Neeson. Wow, two films with Liam Neeson in less than two years. <gasps> That's crazy now. But Marvel gets access to some of Fox's film characters. Case in point, Galactus and the Silver Surfer. So, you know, what really excites me about this is not the fact that they are planning to use Galactus or the Silver Furfur, but the fact that, did I say the Silver Furfur? The Silver Furfur! Furfur! When I thought of Furfur, I thought of Furby! Remember those damn things? Those Furbies really creeped me the fuck out. I actually remember my sister had a Furby, and uh, it was really so annoying to the fact that we were downstairs in the basement, I just took a hammer and I just pew, 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 mangled that thing, and it would not stop for being like what the living f but back to what i'm saying damn silver furfur derailed it, it took one talk about a furby to derail this entire video god <sighs> it's like the live streams all over again with bakuman damn it neo come on okay <laughs> fuck 
this video. End it right now. <laughs> but, um... But it's the fact that more of a deal is being, um... That a deal is being struck because, as you guys know, it would have taken a while for these rights to expire and then Marvel would have to do something with them and it would take just a lot of time. So it's easier for them to get the rights and put them in a movie. That actually kind of hurt. Ow. Ow! Really, I think I sucked myself too hard. But my main issue is the fact that people were talking about putting Galactus in an Avengers sequel. Ow! Uh, and this is where I really draw the line. It really... Galactus of all people now mind you this isn't just for the sake of adapting or, or the fact that uh, Saying you know like we're getting points for doing it. It's just that Really you, you kind of have to be practical with the type of villains that you choose for um For film you don't want it to look too out of this world and just like really did that just happen? And this isn't anything to the level of well, you have Superman and he's fighting in his underwear So I don't see how Galactus would be impossible Look at Galactus Look at Captain America I'm just saying it's one of those things where really he would only work on the pages of a comic book or Maybe an animated film, you know just live-action if it doesn't work but that's just personally me, though. We'll have to see what they do with the Galactus or the Silver Surfer character. So, I guess this is good if they ever, if there ever were any other rights that they needed to get back and they can't get back in time. Striking a deal is definitely a better option, I guess. And it, it does play in well with what they were playing to with Spider-Man, because as you guys know, with Spider-Man... Um, Marvel had struck a deal with Sony. They do control more of the Spider-Man rights now as opposed to 10 years ago when uh, Raimi made the films. So, Spider-Man is officially part of the MCU. As you guys remember, they had the Oscorp, they were planning to have an Oscorp Tower cameo at the end of the Avengers, but due to, I think, time constraints or editing issues, it was just omitted from the film. So, yeah, Spider-Man will show up in the Avengers eventually. And the reason why I'm not so pressed about it is because Spider-Man really was never a part of the initial Avengers. He came well down the road later in the future so it's okay if we have to wait for another avengers movie to see him we need to establish the spider-man character he needs at least two movies to develop you know what i'm saying and then down the road they can all have super happy fun time and of course andrew garfield will get a kick out of it i mean he's living his freaking dream right now this is something he's wanted to do since he was a baby he was a little child in a spider-man costume Moving right along, Joss Whedon has signed on to direct and write the sequel to The Avengers. So for all the Joss Whedon fans out there, I guess that's a good thing. Me, myself, and I, I'm not too big, too big a fan of Whedon's work. I've seen a couple episodes of Firefly and, of course, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And the main consensus I've got with Whedon is that, you know, he's really a hit-or-miss guy. When he hits, he strikes out a home run. Strikes out. That's actually kind of bad. He hits a home run, but when he fails... And misses, it's really bad. He strikes out. That analogy works right there. So, you know, really, we're just going to have to see what's going to happen with the Avengers 2. Honestly, I don't want it to be more of the same because there's only so much you could do. I mean, the Avengers was a good popcorn movie. It was great. And I thought that for what they were trying to do, it worked for this movie. But you don't want to be repeating essentially the same thing you did with the last movie. There's, there's, there's only so much before people go... Uh, okay, we just saw something like this a while ago. Can we get something fresh? Which I think he's going to do because, well, I just want him to one-up himself. I don't want him to just resort to the, oh, let's just have all these guys on screen and kick ass. Not really anything important going on. You know what I'm saying? But who am I? You know, let's just wait and see what's going to happen. Also, trickling out from Disney, they just confirmed that Whedon will also be helming a Marvel-based TV series on ABC, so you can expect that to air for one season, and boom, canceled. Yeah, that's ABC for ya. But, hey, there are many possibilities to this that I'm interested in. Uh, case in point, I personally think that uh, this will work great for a lot of the smaller superheroes that they can't establish with solo movies, because there are some heroes that, you know, just can't, break into the mainstream they just don't have that appeal so if they have a tv series that will focus on some of them i think they'll work well and then you can see them transition to a future avengers or a future iron man or a future captain america you know what i'm saying that's definitely something good 
Knowing Whedon, I think it's probably going to be a Black Widow slash Shield TV series, more emphasis being on Black Widow. So for all you Scarlett Johansson fans, seeing her in black leather, yeah, you'll be able to see it on a weekly basis if this thing really takes off. But hey, again, we're just going to have to wait and see what's going to be going on in the television department as well. Kind of sucks it's going to be on ABC considering their history with prime time and television shows. It's not really too good. But yeah, that's really all I want to update you guys on in regards to superhero related information. What do you guys think about Marvel striking a deal with Fox to get back other characters? What do you want to see in particular? Uh, are you glad that Josh Whedon is returning to direct and write the Avengers? And what character or characters do you want to see in this Marvel based TV series? It's not an Avengers based TV series because I've seen a lot of people saying that and a lot of controversy has started. It's just Marvel based so it could be anything. And also, if you haven't, I definitely recommend checking out, since we're on the topic of Daredevil, Daredevil, blah, 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 check out the director's cut of Daredevil, because for all those who passed on this because they saw the reviews and they essentially got the consensus that it was a horrible, shitty movie, watch the director's cut, I implore you, it is such a better film, it's definitely true to Daredevil's character, and yeah, Ben Affleck did a fantastic job as Matt Murdock, and you will see why when you watch the director's cut. I I'm a fan of Iron Man, I'm a fan of... Watchmen, and I'm a fan of Daredevil Director's Cut. Not Daredevil, just Daredevil Director's Cut. Yeah. But I want to thank you guys for watching this video. I'm NGS signing out, and like always, I will catch you guys later. Peace.